Reverend Hagler. Good morning. Deacon Harris. Good morning. Musicians, members, morning. and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's a little weak, but I'm going to let you slide. I'm going to let you slide today. My name is Jan Beckwith, and I am a member of the Greenest Ministry, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome our guests. I have no guests registered this morning, but if you are visiting with us, would you please stand at this time? Okay. Well, good morning. We are all blessed to be together once again in the house of the Lord, so we can just say amen to that. Amen. amen. I came across something, I think I did this a long time ago, but it sort of gave me a smile, and it was about everything I need to know I learned from Noah's Ark. Don't miss the boat. <laughs> Remember that we are all in the same boat. Plan ahead. It wasn't training. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. Stay fit because when you're 60 years old, someone may ask you to do something really big. Don't listen to critics. Just get on with the job that needs to be done. Build your future on high ground. For safety's sake, travel in pairs. Speed isn't always an advantage. The snails were on board with the cheetah. When you're stressed, float a while. And remember, the ark was built by amateurs. The Titanic was built by professionals. And no matter the storm, when you are with God, there is always a rainbow waiting. Have a blessed day. Catches our attention. I just want to thank Sister Jack Beckwith for that. And Sister and brothers in that same spirit, that love of Jesus Christ, I greet you this morning and welcome us into the household of faith one more time. Because God has seen fit that we could come here one more time. And therefore, we need to praise the Lord for the ability of just getting up this morning to stretch it. Amen. Because you don't have to be here. You could, uh, as they used to say, in the old days, uh, uh, you know, there could have been your cooling board, not your springboard. Amen? Amen. So we got to give some glory to God for the fact that we're able to meet the day, a new day. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. We give some praise to the Lord. This morning for God is truly worthy of our praise. Amen? Because it was with somebody last week and healed somebody last week, blessed somebody last week, restored somebody last week, took somebody from the valley of the span and placed them on the hill of hope. Now, the Lord has been in the midst of our living and of our lives, and that's what we give praise to God for this morning. To praise Him, don't you do it one more time? To praise the Lord. that is united and not a world that is united and not a world 
that is the Bible. So I greet you all this morning in that spirit of hope, that spirit of love, that spirit that binds us together and reminds us that we're all God's creatures, no matter where we come from, no matter what language we speak. The fact is that something miraculous happened on that cross, and that is that we became a family of God's people. Wherever we came from, whatever language we speak, where, wherever our, our feet have taken us from one place to another, we are all God's people united together in one hope, one prayer to the mercy of God. So I'm going to greet you this morning. I'm going to ask that you share a handshake of love with somebody. Why? Because you know of the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus is in you. Share that handshake and hug with somebody because uh, that, that love has been given to you as a gift from God. You want to hold on to those gifts. You've got to share it. In order to make room in that blessing, that cup of blessings that you have, uh, you got to pour some out. You got to share some with somebody. So I say to you this morning, as you prepare to share the peace of Jesus Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you. Share that with your name. for us this morning. Uh, one is uh, to be reminded of our prayer line, our prayer calling on Wednesday mornings uh, at 6 a.m. I'll dial up, power up. And we have a very faithful crew that's on the line. 
Many of them are there before we even open the conference call. So come and be a part of that. You will be blessed with that prayer. It lasts for a half hour. Amen. There's Bible study Thursdays, 12 noon. Uh, and uh, there's also midweek service Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you will see an announcement in your bulletin for March 9th, 19th, March 19th, which is a Passover Seder uh, that uh, many of us participated in last year, and it's coming up again this year, a Passover Seder uh, sponsored by Jewish Voices for Peace. So I draw your attention to that. If you want to avail yourself of that, it's uh, in March. Uh, so but be a part of that. Also, February the 18th, at Cedar Grove uh, Unitarian, not, uh, Cedar Lane Unitarian Universalist Church, where uh, my colleague, uh, Reverend uh, Abi Janamanchi, is the pastor. They will hold uh, a, a all-day session, seminary for a day. It's called Seminary for a Day. Uh, and, um, and you can see that announcement in the bulletin. I'm, I will lead a workshop at that, um, at that uh, program uh, on uh, the 18th of February. That begins at 8, 8.30 in the morning. Also on the 19th of February, uh, there's a health heart luncheon and seminar uh, after 11 a.m. service on February the 19th. And also on February the 19th at 4, we will have our talented musicians uh, here in the church. And so you'll be blessed and you can avail yourself of any of those uh, programs as they go forward. Uh, and so we lift all those up to you for your attention and for your attendance. It's now that time that we prepare to bring our tithes, our gifts, our offerings into the Lord's house. For God has been good to us, is good to us right now. God has blessed us in very awesome ways. And so we're called to respond to those blessings in an awesome way. To give to the Lord from the depths of our being, from the depths of our heart. Why? Because the Lord has given to us already everything that we need. And what we think that we need, uh, God is prepared to, 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 to fill us with wonderful blessings. Uh, we just need to respond in a way in which we make a statement of our own faith. That we trust and we believe that the Lord is able. So trust and believe that the Lord is able. A tithe is 10%. It's not very much when we consider all that the Lord has done, all that the Lord is doing, all that the Lord will do. We give from our love and from the depths of our heart. Trustees, if you will come forth, prepare to receive tithes, give and offer. Amen. thank you for the bounty of our lives. We thank you for the goodness that you have provided. We thank you for every gift, every blessing, every instance of mercy and concern. We lift it all up to you and we give, Lord, because you have given to us and we give generously, Lord, because you have been more than generous with our living. All these things we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen.
comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. And it is chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. And it reads in this way, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the, light stand, on the lamp stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your creator in heaven. May God add a blessing to the reading of those words. Let us join in a moment of prayer. Lord, we come to you today and we just give you thanks. Give you thanks for this word that is open to us and for us and we ask and pray, Lord, that you give us the ability not only to read it, but to perceive what it is saying to us in this time in which we live, in these moments in which we stand. For one thing is certain, and that is that you are the potter and we are the clay. So mold and shape us as you would have us to be until we are perfectly fitted for your kingdom and able to call ourselves disciples of Jesus the Christ. Now, as we come to this teaching moment, you hone it, you shape it, you develop it, you send it forth as you see fit. Allow it all to be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 A few moments to teach on the subject, a, a, a spirit, a spirit of salt and light. A spirit of salt and light. Now those words are very clear and concise. You are the salt of the earth. Now, if you think in your own lives, you pro probably have described somebody like that, saying that that person is the salt of the earth, that the, the, those folks, uh, they're the salt of the earth. When we say that, we mean that a person or people are simple, honest, trustworthy, have good qualities and possess a character that exemplifies goodness, a good person. 
a person or people treating others with deep respect and kindness and care. You are the salt of the earth, meaning that there is a earthiness to you, a, a kind of purity and essentialness that exudes from a person or people's spirit, uh, a, a people that are open and welcoming, a people that believes in basic things like treating other folks right, treating other folks right, showing mercy to a neighbor, uh, showing some concern uh, to somebody that they know or even somebody that they don't know. You are the salt of the earth. I remember when we were in Palestine and we went into a Bedouin village, one of these temporary villages because the Bedouins have been uh, uh, trapped uh, and, and, and because they are nomadic people, but they've been trapped because of this wall. And so you went into this village and there was much, not much there, just a, a, a lot of squalor and people living among the animals that they uh, were, were shepherding and working with. And, and so you had a few little uh, things that were built uh, on the site uh, that were not very much other than stables-like type things where people lived. Uh, but then you realize that people came and they, they, they fed you and people came and served you and people let you know that they were thankful that you were there and you realize what the salt of the earth feels like and looks like in terms of the hospitality of somebody who doesn't have much but what they have they're going to share even with a stranger. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored. It is no longer good for anything but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. Jesus is speaking, if you look at this text, to the people. He's teaching people and he's encouraging people to be salt, to be salt, to be the salt of the earth, to accent life, to, to, to season life and to be a blessing to life and to others. You are the salt of the earth. In Jesus' own earthiness, he's focusing on something that is valuable and versatile in its use and uh, 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 attract and attaches that image to people. You are the salt of the earth. But if you lose your saltiness, then there is nothing left to your unique being and your unique calling, remember that you are the salt of the earth. Now what is salt? I had to spend a little time exploring this mineral that is in so many things. Without it, food is flat, and yet grains of it in proper proportions can accent and highlight the taste of food. What is this thing called salt? And why is Jesus talking about it? And why would he say to me and you, you are the salt of the earth? Now common salt or table salt is a mineral that's composed primarily of sodium chloride. Salt in its natural form as a crystalline mineral is known as rock salt or halite. Salt is presented in vast quantities in in. in, in in seawater where it is the main mineral constituent. The open ocean contains approximately 1.2 ounces of solid salts per liter. Salt is all around us. It is in the waters and it is in us. Salt is essential to our lives and to animal life. Animal tissue continues, law contains large quantities of salt. Salt is one of the oldest seasonings and salting has been a method of food preservation throughout the ages. When you look back and you read history, salt was a prized possession of ancient Hebrews and the Greeks and the Romans and the Byzantines and the Hittites and the Egyptians and among African nations and throughout the world. Folks actually traded salt as a commodity that had a monetary value to it. Through history, the availability of salt has been pivotal pivotal to civilizations with villages and cities locating near areas that had access to salt. The word salary, for example, 
comes from the Latin word for salt because it had a monetary value. The Roman legions were sometimes paid in salt. It was a precious commodity. Roads were even built to transport salt from production to markets and between markets. The scarcity and the universal need for salt led nations to war over it even. And yet salt is used in religious ceremonies. And often when a new house is dedicated, it is dedicated with the offerings of bread and salt. Salt is also used for far more things than human consumption. Out of an annual global production of salt, measuring about 200 million tons a year, and, and yet approximately only 6% of it is used in human consumption. Other uses for salt include water conditioning processes, de-icing of roads and highways that we see in the wintertime, and agricultural use. Edible salt is sold in forms such as sea salt and table salt and often contains an anti-caking agent. Do you remember Martin's salt that read on its products of salt, when it rains, it pours? Some salts are iodized to prevent iodine deficiency. Just like salt is used in cooking and at the table, it is also prevalent in many processed foods. This is why processed foods can, can, can up our salt intake and raise our blood pressure because it's there as a seasoning and also as a preservative. Now, sodium is an essential nutrient for human health. However, excessive salt consumption can increase the risk of cardiovascular diseases such as hypertension. Numerous health associations recommend reducing consumption of salty foods in order to live longer and healthier, Cheryl, but God says you are the light, you are the salt of the earth. Jesus is telling people, he is trying to tell us that we are essential, just like salt was essential. We are valuable, just as salt is valuable. We are the essence of life because we really can't live without it, but too much of it can harm us, and we are seasoned with God to season the world for God. You are the salt of the earth. But then he teaches, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled under foot. As you know, I just came back not too long ago from Palestine, and there's a lot of salt in Palestine. On the Dead Sea, rocks and branches are caked with salt because there is so much salt in the atmosphere. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on land on the earth, and that means that water is flowing through the desert when it rains, makes its way to that lowest point, to the Dead Sea, and brings with it all of the minerals picked up as the water flows from where it flows into the Dead Sea, and there you can see the saltiness of the sea and the land. You will be caked in salt if you float in the Dead Sea, and I guarantee that you will float because there is so much salt in that sea. It is a dead sea. But the dead sea is also contaminated with much else like gypsum and other minerals that make its taste flat and even repulsive. When a batch of such contaminated salt finds its way into a household and is discovered, it is thrown out. And people are careful not to throw it out onto the land or into a garden or into a field because it will kill whatever is growing there. Instead, it will be thrown on a path or a road where it would gradually be ground into the dirt and disappear. Now, salt cannot really become unsalted, but contaminants can cause it to lose its value as salt. Its saltiness can no longer function. Now Jesus is reminding us that we are the salt of the earth. We are essential and we are valuable. We're important to God and to life, but we should not let our unique flavor become contaminated with things that make us lose 
our central saltiness. In other words, he's trying to say, hold on to things like the love of God. Hold on to it. Hold on and share the, the love of God. Be the love of God. Hold on to the hope of the Lord. And don't allow cynicism and other contaminants to steal who you are or to sap your flavor. You are the salt of the earth. You, you are here for seasoning life. You are, you are here to make life taste good. You are here to, to, to bring what God has placed in you for the, the, the kind of a meal that we all should share in in our living, a meal that is flavorful and a meal that is exciting. You are the salt of the earth. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? You, you. That, that means that what Jesus is trying to say to the folks is that you are special. You are somebody no matter what the world says. You, 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 you are my own creation. You, you are as valuable as salt is. You as, are as essential as salt is. You are the salt of the earth. If, 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 if we don't let the other things in life contaminate our spirit, if, if, if we don't let the other things in life steal our joy, if we don't let the other things in life steal our connection to God, if we don't let the other things in life that separate us from our divine-like character, you hold on to the love of God. We hold on to the love of God, the hope of God. We hold on to the light of God. We hold on to that. We don't allow the contaminants to destroy the value of who we are. And sisters and brothers, you know, it can be hard to hold on to what God has given to us, particularly in these times that we're dealing with. Amen? Amen? There's been a number of times I wanted to go back to my Baltimore nature and use some words that I shouldn't be using. Amen? Right? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I mean, the fact is, the fact is, is that there is stuff that is going on in the world and goes on in the world all the time that can pull us out of the, the, the character that God wants us to be. And so we do need to pray about it every single day, every, every moment, because it is a, a, a troubling space that we're in. You know, to see somebody to act as if somebody is uh, uh, going to sit there and act as doing black history, Mom, as if Frederick Douglass is still alive. <laughs> somebody heard of him, and they said he's gaining in popularity. Amen. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, it just shows you how foolish. There's some words I want to use, but I can't use them this morning, amen? But it's important to remember doing Black History Month. And as we come to this celebration every February, but we really should be celebrating it year around, we need to remind ourselves every day that we are the salt of the earth. We are unique and valuable. We are uh, of the essential thing of life because God has given to us this gift. Because when you lose uh, 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 an understanding that you are the salt of the earth, then, then you can end up flocking to white supremacists as black folks and see nothing wrong with it. When you begin to lose your character. In other words, when you begin to lose your mind. In other words, when you begin to lose your, your place in, in history and your relationship to a loving and just God. You are the salt of the earth. But it doesn't just end there with saltiness. But also, he says, you are the light. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The image here is of a beacon. It is like a lighthouse that draws others to it as a beacon of safety and security, piercing the envelope of darkness. You are the light of the world. 
what a role, what a calling when you think about it. And what an awesome mission. You are salt and you are light. You are salt and you are light. You're salt not only of your neighborhood, but you are the salt of the earth. And you're light not only in your own household, but you're the light of the world. You're salt and you are light. A city built on a hill, he says, cannot be hid. You can see it in the distance, a a city on a hill, and you can even see the lights dotting it in the darkness as it sits high on that hill. Remember, he's saying you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And he goes on to say that no one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house in the same way. Let your light shine, Dr. Young, and it gives light to others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your creator in heaven. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And who we are should attract the lost, the seeking, the looking, and the wanting to be found. You are a city on a hill, a beacon in the midst of a dark world. You are the light of the world, a lampstand that gives light to the world, environs where we live and breathe. You are the salt, the light, on a hill, and and lightening up the whole environment. And so let your light shine before others. That, 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 that's, when you think about that challenge, It is a different kind of challenge. It's it's recognizing your own self-worth. God has given to you value, purpose, essence. God has already done that. It's not anything that you just got to go out and seek. God has already done that. We just got to recognize that we are the salt of the earth. Because you know, once you begin to recognize your goodness and your autonomy and the power that God has given to you, you start living like that. You, you, you stop begging other folks for permission. But you live to the glory of God because you are, you, you are the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. In other words, you don't need to beg anybody for anything. It's already been provided. It's already been given. You are salt. You are light. Live it. Be it. Be the creatures that God has made you to be. And, 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 and understand that, that, that you are here for a purpose and for a reason. A city on a hill cannot be hid. You don't light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Let your light shine yeah. so that others might see in you God working with you. Allow folks to see in you the divine principles that are in you. Let others see in you that you are a child of God. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Uh, Everywhere I go, you're going to know that I'm going to let it shine. Even in my neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. Even in my school, I'm going to let it shine. Even when I'm working, I'm going to let it shine. Even when I'm demonstrating, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, we're going to let it shine because we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. Amen. 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 
the doors of the church are open. If somebody here today heard a word and want to come and give themselves of Jesus to the cause of hope and liberation and love, I want to invite you forth. If you're looking for a church home, I want to invite you forth to come and consider Plymouth as that church home. Everybody needs to be in a church home some way. Come forth from wherever you are. Come before the Lord. The doors of the church are open. Let us stand together saying, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little to adjourn from our worship this morning. Let your light shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Remembering that you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Carry that light and that essential purpose into the world. Let it visit folk. Let it be with folks. Let folks see in you the hope that God wants to demonstrate and to show. Go forth and be the salt and be the light to your neighbor and to your world. In the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, amen. and Amen.